It truly is a happy Harley day. Happy Harley Day, everybody. What's going on? Welcome to an all-new Talkin' Movies. As always, I am your host, the real Gino, Gino Reynolds. And today, we're going to be talking about Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Or as they probably should have called it, Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. Uh, That's what I would have named it. But that's... uh, The title actually, in a way, kind of makes sense because of uh, being that this story is... Uh, narrated by Harley Quinn. It, of course, it's going to have a, a kind of a wacky title. Uh, what this movie is about is uh, it's loosely based after the Suicide Squad, um, which I'll talk about that more in a minute on how it connects. Uh, but you have the Joker and Harley are now broken up, uh, and Harley is, is not handling it well, uh, even though she's narrating and telling you she is. Um, but she is still enjoying the protection of being with the Joker. Uh, she's acting up in nightclubs and stuff and, but people are like, well, that's the Joker's girl. We're not going to mess with her. Well, she then, uh, very publicly breaks up with the Joker or announces that she's broken up with the Joker by blowing up the Ace Chemical Factory. Uh, but that, uh, action of hers takes away all of our protection because people know they're not together anymore. So now that everyone's that's ever had a problem with her is coming after her. Uh, and there's a lot of them. Uh, also you have the black mask, uh, looking for an item that's going to help him find this hidden fortune. And this item ends up in the hands of a young girl, uh, who you have, uh, the police looking for her you have the criminals looking for her uh harley has to end up looking for her. it all plays into the entire plot and i don't want to spoil too much uh but this ends up leading uh harley and the unlikely heroes of gotham uh to band together to stop uh the black mask from getting uh this young girl uh and killing her um Okay, first things first, I'm going to get out what I didn't like about this movie right away. And it's not much. Uh, but here's the thing. I, I like the villains in this. I like the performances uh, of Black Mask and Victor Zaz. The only thing is, they weren't as threatening as I would have liked them to have been. Um, they, they try to make, especially Zaz, they try to make him very uh they try to make him scary and they do some creepy and gross stuff and and again i like their performances i like what they did with them i just wish they would have been more threatening to our heroes uh because um without spoiling anything the heroes it doesn't it's not difficult for them to take out the bad guys in this movie um now they're don't get me wrong margot robbie playing harley goes through i mean she gets her she gets her butt handed to her a lot in this movie um i mean she takes a beating but not at the hands of these two characters for the most part um so i just would have liked the villains to have been a little more threatening now let's talk about everything i liked which was pretty much everything else uh of course the big standout of the movie was is no surprise it's margot robbie as harley quinn um, she not only gets to steal her own show, uh, that should have been named again, Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, but she also narrates it. So, and which is fantastic because, you know, Harley Quinn is not the most reliable narrator. So you have her telling a story and then something will be happening. You'll be like, wait, how'd they get here? And then she'll be like, oh, wait, I guess I better tell you all this before I tell you this. And and it worked really well, and just the way she uses her voice to uh, to lead you in that direction. It's like, oh yeah, I forgot. Um, it, it's fantastic. Uh, Margot Robbie was back in the Suicide Squad. She was the perfect choice, and now she gets to shine on her own. 
And of course she's going to be in James Gunn's Suicide Squad movie. I'm excited about that. I'm sure they're probably going to do another one of these. More than happy to see it. Again, I hope they call it, you know, Harley Quinn and Birds Prey. Um, so yeah, Harley Quinn, uh, of course is my favorite part of this movie. I mean, I love Harley Quinn anyway. I mean, I'm doing a whole, uh, Harley Quinn day, uh, when I release this and, and some other videos. So I love Harley Quinn. Margot Robbie is perfect as Harley Quinn. I love just her narration of this. I love, uh, there's, she breaks the fourth wall a couple times by looking at you, you know, and kind of be like, you know, she winks at you once she looks at you when something happens. She's kind of just like, you know, it's fantastic. Um, you know, she doesn't flat out, I mean, yes, she's narrating, but she doesn't flat out, uh, really talk to you. Uh, but she's definitely connected to the audience. Uh, and it really worked well for me. Yeah. Everything she did in this movie, I loved best part of the movie by far. Then that's not putting down the rest of the movie at all, because I love the rest of this movie. I loved, uh, even though I don't think they got to shine as much, I really liked, uh, all the other heroes in this first Rosie Perez is uh, Renee Montoya. Uh, she's basically a cop that's getting passed over. Uh, people are taking credit for work she's done. Uh, she's, uh, an alcoholic. It's, she's just, you know, they, they talk about her past relationship with the assistant DA. There's just all this history with her. And she, is just a cop trying to get her due and she kind of, or she's going after black mask, but she kind of stumbles into, uh, the other aspects, uh, of, of the other characters because some of the other characters, the way they come together, uh, it's all, you know, there's just bit parts here and there where all the pieces come together. And I really like Rosie Perez's, uh, I liked her performance. She plays someone that's been a cop for a long time and it's just beating her down. And she does fantastic in this. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Uh, it took a little bit for me to get into her performance as the Huntress. Uh, because they really didn't give you much at first. They didn't really build her up till near the end. Because her story kind of plays into the main plot. Like the big plot. Um, but once she got going, I really liked her performance. Because she's... Her character isn't just this uh, kick butt superhero, right? This she she's just really awkward, and it's fantastic. I love the fact that they made her awkward. She's trying to be cool. She's trying so hard to be cool. It just comes off as awkward. Uh, that being said, her being paired with all these other awkward characters, uh, she fits in because uh, you have you know her you know, she, she makes up the Huntress name and everyone's just calling her like the crossbow killer. Right. And she's like, it's the Huntress, it's the Huntress and the, and the, her crew, her new crew, the birds of prey are just like, we love it. We love that name. It's so cool. You know, and they, they love her and she fits in, um, uh, journey some, uh, Smollett bell as black canary. I really liked how they changed her around. Uh, she is like the singer and the black mass club, but he finds out that she can fight, so uh, she becomes his new driver. And this leads to her uh, trying to protect a character I'm going to talk about here in just a second. Um, I like that they didn't overuse her powers. Uh, it, it, they, they show you a little taste of it, and I think they show it in the trailer. But they wait till later in the movie to really let her go full-blown with the power. Uh, but the thing is... I, they can't overuse it because it looks like if she overuses her power, uh, it takes so much out of her. She like passes out. So I like that. They just didn't have a, oh, well, well, we have this character with powers and she can just lay waste to the bad guys. And we have no need for all these fight scenes and everything. Um, and so I really liked her performance as well. And then you had, uh, Ella J Basco as Cassandra Kane. She's just a little smart aleck. Uh, just rough kid, and there's not much to say about her. Uh, I'm, I'm curious what they're going to do with her in the future, uh, but I really did enjoy just her smugness and 
uh, she's, she's also seems like an outsider and is looking for a place to fit in. And so the performances are fantastic in this. Again, I, the villains could have been a little more threatening, but I still enjoyed the performances, uh, from Ian McGregor as Roman Sionis, Black Mask, and, uh, Chris Messina as Victor Zaz. I just wish they would have done more, th- more with them. I liked with how they introduced them though, just showing them how sadistic they both are and how Zaz is almost almost manipulating Black Mask uh, into doing like really disgusting uh, and just horrible things to people. Um, I mentioned uh, just the way the story is told. It's very all over the place again because it's being told by Harley Quinn. So uh, it's just kind of all over the place. And I just love how they uh, did that where, again, you'd be going... Uh, one direction and then you all of a sudden Harley standing in the police station you're like how did you get there uh, so I love the way it was told now the connections to uh, Suicide Squad uh, you could definitely tell that uh, they were going to continue the original Suicide Squad at the time because uh, okay people were wondering do they show the Joker yes technically and then okay the, the intro of the movie is in cartoon form. So, and that works really well. And they're kind of narrating things when they really need to show the Joker. Um, but they do show clips from Suicide Squad of the creation of Harley Quinn with the Ace Chemicals and everything. And you kind of see part of uh, Suicide Squad's Joker, uh, the Jared Leto Joker. It just shows like just a little bit of the back of his head or something. So I can definitely tell that in the future, they're going to replace him with somebody else. And that's, I mean, I mean, cause think about it. They wouldn't have done all the tattoos and everything else. If, uh, they weren't going to at least take aspects, uh, from suicide squad. Uh, so you can kind of consider this and the new suicide suicide squad, kind of a soft reboot where you can introduce a new Joker because they really haven't showed his face other than in cartoon and drawing form. Um, and the Joker has mentioned a ton of, in this movie and there is no way that he can't be involved in either the new suicide suicide squad movie or whatever new birds of prey movie they do next which again this movie is fantastic there is no way they are not making another one so the promise of a new joker uh is really fantastic because you know margo robbie said i guess in an interview uh she didn't understand why people like the character being attached to a madman. And I don't think, I think she kind of misunderstands the Harley Quinn fandom. She see Harley Quinn's an, is an interesting character because, uh, that she's a, that she has this infatuation with this madman. But I think most fans are just really hoping for a movie like this or for a story like this, where Harley Quinn gets away from the Joker and breaks that obsession and then goes and breaks the Joker's face. Like they're doing, in the Harley Quinn cartoon uh, on the DC Universe streaming app. So that's the kind of story we want from Harley. It's like she just, you you care for her. You want her to to realize that the Joker is a POS and that she shouldn't be obsessed with him and helping him out and in love with him. And that's where this story leads. And I, now they have to face off harley and the joker and i it's probably not going to be the jared leto joker they're probably going to uh introduce somebody else as the joker and in a way of soft rebooting uh without having to get rid of everything on the suicide squad and there's also like i said there's little things here and there there's uh there's a callback to her the shirt she wears uh there's uh, there's a wanted poster that has another Suicide Squad member on it. And she's like, I know that guy. It just, it's just not a, like an Easter egg in the background. It's, it, it, she points it out and is like, hey, I know him. Um, so there's, there's little connections here and there. So you could tell that they definitely were going to connect this at first. And now they're just kind of trying to make up, okay, what, what do we need to keep? What can we get rid of? And I think they did a really good job of it. Again, not showing the Joker's face is a smart move because then, well, you don't have to get Jared Leto back and we all know he's probably not coming back. If he does, I'd like to see what he could do because he really didn't get much time to shine. But honestly, I think the smartest move they can do now is find someone else to be the Joker. 
So yeah, all in all, uh, I loved this movie. Uh, my minor complaints aside, I love the narration. Margot Robbie is fantastic. Uh, the rest of the cast is really good. Uh, they all had pretty good chemistry together. Um, there's a lot of promise for the future. The, the flashbacks were fun. Uh, again, because you have Harley Quinn narrating everything and it's so jumbled and uh, it makes sense because it's in her mind. Uh, I love that uh, there's connection. Again, there's more connections to Suicide Squad. Uh, there's a scene, I, I forgot to mention this, where Harley basically just tells the whole plot to Suicide Squad uh, when someone asks her, well, what do I need to do to become like you? And she's like, well, you need to do this. You need to go to school. You need to become this. You need to uh, fall in love with a madman after you go to work. And, all, and then she's like, and then she explains the whole Suicide Squad plot, save the world and all that. Uh, so they're, the, the way they connected everything, they, they mentioned Batman. Is it going to be the Robert Pattinson Batman? We don't know. Uh, there's a lot of questions here, and they're questions that I'm looking forward to seeing uh, answered. I'd love to see Harley Quinn show up in the Batman movie. I don't know if she will or if that Batman movie is going to be connected, but I mean, I know they don't, they don't want to really do the Marvel connection thing. I think they're going to establish all these characters separately and then just bring them together uh, in a bigger movie, like a justice league movie. Or honestly, I'd love to just see them build like a Gotham, uh, be, you know, with you have your Harley and your Joker and Batman and, uh, some of the other characters you can bring into that, uh, build kind of a Gotham universe would be cool with me. Um, but I liked what they took from Suicide Squad and kept, uh, I'm glad that, uh, I'm just glad that I, I was so, I mean, I mean, when we saw the title for this movie, we were like, really, what is this going to be? God, please let this be good. And it's one of my favorite movies this year so far. I mean, granted, I haven't had a ton to root for, uh, other than some of the Oscar movies, but no, this one, I mean, it's, it, it's so good. It's so much fun. Uh, the R rating, uh, it definitely helps. I mean, it's not just cussing. Uh, it gets to be violent and bloody. Uh, honestly, I, I expected it to be bloodier. There is a lot of broken bones in this movie, and, and a lot of them lead to a lot of laughs. Uh, so the R rating works really well, and honestly, I, I hope this is the future of the DC Universe. It's a bold step. Uh, because if you establish these characters in R ratings, it'd be hard to bring them together for a PG-13 movie. So that is something they're going to have to think about. But if, especially this Gotham universe, if they want to keep Gotham R, like if the Batman is an R rated movie, I'm going to be excited because I thought they did really well, uh, being able to incorporate the R rating and let the characters get a little violent and cuss and everything else. And yeah, while a part of it is, well, we can just say a lot of F-bombs. Uh, I just like that, uh, like the, these characters, a lot of the Gotham characters are very violent and they get to be bloody and violent in this. Uh, they don't, they're not held back by a PG-13 rating. So I thought the R rating was, uh, was a very good step for this. And I definitely look forward to seeing more, man. I, I really love this movie. There's not much more I can say about it. Just, I mean, you're probably going to go see it anyway, but those of you that have fears about this movie, the fears should be gone. This movie is fantastic. I, I loved pretty much every second of it. Margot Robbie, I bow down because you are perfect as Harley Quinn in this and you lead this movie, uh, that is a lot of fun. It's really funny. Uh, a lot of great connections to other comics. I mean, come on, her her hyena's name is Bruce, and she named it after that hunky Wayne guy. There's so many cool connections, and I look forward to seeing what they bring uh, to this Gotham universe in the future. That's going to be all for this edition of Talkin' Movies. If you like what you've heard here, please subscribe to the Real Gino YouTube channel. Like this video. If you have anything to say about Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Till next time, I am your host, the Real Gino, Gino Reynolds. Happy Harley Day, and I'll see you later, puddins.